Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Mostro Moto, and in today's episode, I'm going to be installing 2-inch risers as well as Pro Taper contour bars on my Yamaha TW200. So the reason I'm installing the 2-inch risers as well as the bars is because I want a little extra height on the handlebars when I'm off-roading. I've been told that when off-roading, this is going to help with handling as well as just overall comfort when riding. So a couple things to consider when installing risers on your motorcycle. You want to make sure that the clutch cable as well as all the other cables on the handlebars are going to be long enough. And specifically when adding 2 inch risers to the Yamaha TW200, I've seen a couple people online say that the clutch cable is not long enough. So I went ahead and picked up a OEM XT250 clutch cable. And the XT250 clutch cable is a little bit longer than the stock clutch cable on the TW200. So I'm hoping that this will help mitigate that problem. And one other thing I picked up is a pair of Pro Taper Pillow Top Light grips because I wanted to replace the factory ones on the bike. So a brief overview on the ROX risers. These risers are meant for 7 8 stem and they connect to either a 7 8 or a 1 and 1 8 handlebar size. And the Pro Taper contours that I picked up are the Woods High and they have a 1 and 1 8 size over here and then it tapers out to a 7 8 size on the actual handles. And this allows for all the stock controls to easily fit back onto the new bar. So a couple tools that I brought along to help with this job, I've got a couple of 10 and 12 millimeter wrenches as well as some sockets. I also have a pair of wire cutters, uh, some Allen keys, and some Phillips head screwdrivers. And just in case I need to make any modifications to the electrical wiring, I've got my little set of uh, solder seal wire connection, as well as the heat shrink. And then for the grips, I just picked up uh, little razors and this will help me cut off the old grips. And then the brake cleaner is just to clean the bar when installing the new grips. Also, if you're going to be installing a new clutch cable like I am, it's a good idea to have some cable lubricant with you and it'll really make the clutch feel a lot nicer. Also, when mounting the controls on the new bar, I have a little drill set there as well as some electrical tape that I'm going to use to help mark and then drill new holes for the controls. All right, so let's move over to the bike and remove the stock bar. All right, so the first thing you want to do when removing the controls on your stock handlebars is you want to start with the grips. And because I'm going to be replacing my grips, I'm just going to go ahead and take a little razor and cut the grips and they should come right off. And when you're removing the grip from the throttle side, just be careful because it is on a plastic tube. That's your uh, throttle tube. So you don't want to crack that. Definitely helps with a nice sharp razor. But it peels right off. And make sure when you remove this grip, you don't lose this washer. All right, and moving back over on the left-hand side, we're gonna remove the clutch first, just using a Phillips head screwdriver. And be careful when removing these screws because they tend to strip really easily. All right, and with those two screws removed, you can go ahead and peel this back. All right, and next to remove these electronics, you're just gonna use your Phillips head screwdriver. And same thing, be careful with stripping these. And those are the two screws and just be careful because there are wires holding this together. All right, and moving back over to the right hand side, we're going to remove the brake reservoir. And to do that, you just need a 10 millimeter socket. All right, and this just removes like that and I'm going to keep all the hardware with it so I don't lose it. And now you can go ahead and set the brake reservoir to the side and just keep in mind that this may introduce some air into the system. So it's a good idea to bleed the brakes before riding again. And the next thing you wanna do is remove the two Phillips head screws for the throttle cables. And when removing these, pay attention to their sizes. The top one is the longer one and then the bottom screw is the shorter one. Now you can go ahead and push this rubber grommet back And once you push back this little piece of rubber, you can go ahead and spread apart the two connections. They come off like that. And then on the throttle cable, just pay attention to how they're connected and go ahead and remove them. 
one at a time. And once they're disconnected, just go ahead and remove the throttle tube. Next, remove the Phillips head screws that hold your kill switch assembly. And once you loosen both screws, you can just remove it like that. And I put it right back together so I don't lose any of the parts. All right, and so now that all the controls are off, you can go ahead and remove the handlebar with a 12 millimeter socket. All right, and once you remove the handlebar clamps, the handlebars will just come right off. All right, so now it's time to install the two inch risers. And to install the ROX risers, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosely install the OEM bar clamps. And when installing the handlebar clamps back on the bike, one thing to look out for is there's this little hole here located on both of the clamps and that's gonna be faced upwards. So you wanna install it just like this. And shout out to T-Dubs Kid for pointing that out. Uh, he makes great videos, so definitely check him out. All right, so I'm gonna take one of the risers and with the letters facing outward, I'm gonna go ahead and insert it just like that and then snug up these bolts. And right now I'm just gonna do hand tight and then I'll adjust them later. And with my open-ended wrench, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug them down a little bit more. Also, when you tighten these bolts down here, you just wanna make sure that you tighten them evenly. Okay, and so the ROX risers that I purchased also work with 7 8 bars, but because the Pro Taper bars that I purchased are 1 and 1 8 I'm gonna need to remove these inserts. To do that, you just need your Allen key. And once you remove those bolts, you can go ahead and remove these inserts and they just pull right off. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the bars. And I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the uh, ROX risers clamps. Once again, I'm just making everything hand tight. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down once I'm finished. And when tighten these, once again, make sure that you tighten them incrementally so that one side is not farther down and uh, clamped harder than the other side. And I'm just gonna go ahead and snug it down with my Allen key so I can mount the controls. And this is what the stock handlebar looks like next to the Pro Taper contours. And they're very similar in size. Um, the Pro Tapers obviously have a slightly different angle, but for the most part, they're very similar. So now that I snugged down the handlebars, I'm just gonna go ahead and check to see how the controls fit. And judging by this, it looks like I'm gonna need to free up some more slack in the brake line because it doesn't quite reach. So in order to free up some brake line, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the headlight. And to do that, you need to remove this plastic cap first just by removing this Phillips head screw. Once you remove that screw, push down and it'll snap right out. Then go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter bolts on either side. Now go ahead and remove the headlight by pulling out and up to release it from this rubber grommet. And I'm just gonna set it down just like that. Once you remove the headlight, you can see that the brake line runs and connects to the bracket on the headlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip this zip tie and see if that'll free up some more space. All right, so now that I cut that zip tie, I just went ahead and pushed the cable upwards a little bit. And that gives you an extra two to three inches and hopefully that'll be enough slack to install it onto the new bars. All right, so now that I released some slack down by the headlight, it looks like even when I turn the wheel to the left, there should be enough slack and it shouldn't be pulling on the brake line too much. All right, so now that you've loosened up that brake cable, um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the headlight housing off for now, just in case I need to loosen up um, or get any more slack out of any of the other cables. So I went ahead and wrapped part of this with electrical tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and install all the um, components back on the bar. And I'm just gonna do it loosely just to make sure everything fits properly. And the reason I installed the electrical tape is because on the throttle housing, there's a little pin, and uh, same thing goes for the kill switch. There's a little pin on the kill switch back here. And on the stock bars, there's two holes that have been drilled out. And essentially that pin fits in that hole and it prevents it from rotating. 
And with that electrical tape, when I go ahead and snuggle this down and put it in the position that works best, uh, it should leave a little mark where that indentation is. And then that's where I'm gonna drill the holes. Also, my bars came with this little cap, which I just went ahead and removed, just so the throttle tube would fit properly. And I know that the throttle cables are gonna be pretty tight when the wheel's turned all the way to the left. So to give it some more slack, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this upside down. And uh, normally it's face up like that, but I'm just gonna mount it like that. And this part goes around the uh, throttle tube. All right, once I got it in the position that I think I'm gonna want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug it down all the way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the kill switch. And that's just gonna go right next to it. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's nice and snug. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the brake reservoir. And so now that these are installed, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the handlebars back all the way to the other lock and back, and uh, the cables don't look like they're pulling at all, so that is good. All right, so now that I know everything is in the right place, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it all, and uh, hopefully, with the tape being there, it left those little imprints, and that's where I know to drill. All right, and I know it's hard to see on camera, but there are marks in the electrical tape. And those marks, once again, are for these little notches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, drill those out real quick. Okay, now that both of the holes are drilled, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the electrical tape. All right, now that we've removed the electrical tape, let's go ahead and reinstall all the components on this side of the handlebar. So starting with the throttle tube, just gonna go ahead and put that on. And reconnecting the cables is pretty simple. You just wanna put the cable in first and then twist. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the covers and make sure that the longer bolt, in my case, because I'm placing it downwards, is on the bottom, and then the shorter bolt is up top. All right, and once you get those in place, just make sure that the throttle feels okay, it's not sticking or anything, and it's functioning properly. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the kill switch, and once again, make sure that little notch right there goes in the hole you just drilled. And then reinstall its back plate. And now that you've secured it, just make sure that both of them are not moving and everything's functioning properly. All right, and the last thing to do on the right-hand side is reinstall the brake reservoir. And once again, if you removed your brake reservoir and it happened to go upside down, just keep in mind that it's possible for air to have gotten into this, and it's best to bleed and refill the brakes. All right, now that everything is installed on the right-hand side, let's just go ahead and once again double check that when we turn all the way to one side, uh, the cables and nothing like that pulls. All right, and all the cables look good. Check the throttle again, and everything looks like it's working properly. All right, so now that I've completed the right-hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the clutch and see if I need to use the XT250's clutch that I purchased. So when tilting the wheel to the left, the clutch does look like it has enough room, but then when you tilt the wheel all the way to the right, it pulls on those wires a little bit, 
and only gives me to about right there. So that's definitely not going to be enough because you want your clutch to be able to run freely. You don't want it to be uh, getting pinched up or getting pulled on. So before I go ahead and remove the stock clutch, I'm just going to see if I can free up any room because it really only needs like one to two inches. And I'd prefer to stick with the stock clutch than switch it out with an aftermarket one. So looking down here, there's not a whole lot of room to play with. The clutch is pretty taunt as it is. So if you follow the clutch cable, you can tell that there's not a whole lot of slack, um, at least on my bike. But one thing I did notice is there's a little bit of room right here um, for the clutch cable to be ran through. And right now it's ran on the right hand side of that uh, bolt. That bolt is what attaches your gauge cluster. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can move the clutch from where it's being run now um, to right over here. So to reroute the clutch, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to disconnect it here up at the top. And to do that, you want to pull back on this rubber grommet. And then pull back on this bigger one. Just like that. And rotating it, you can see the clutch cable in there. So to remove that cable, what you want to do is you want to adjust these um, little knobs right here. You want to turn this one all the way in towards the right. And once it's lined up, these little notches are lined up, you should have enough slack where you can pull the cable outwards like that. And then it should just come right out of those slots. And then on the back side of a clutch itself, or the clutch lever, it just pulls right out. So we'll set this to the side for right now. This wire here has plenty of room. I'm not really concerned about that. I'm mainly just concerned about the clutch cable itself. So without bending the clutch cable, I'm just gonna go ahead and try and reroute it. I'm gonna pull it down. Just feed it back through where it came from. Just by removing it completely from the uh, triple tray, I'm gonna see if it will give me enough room just like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my clutch lever and put it all back together and see if that's gonna give me enough slack. Putting it back together is super simple. You just wanna make sure that all of these little slots are lined up so the cable can just be dropped right in. And you wanna start up here. Okay, once you have it inserted in there, just line up these little notches and pull the cable through and it'll seat back down in a place like that. All right, so now that that's in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it down a little bit. All right, and so now that I rerouted the cable, um, as you can tell, I didn't route it through the triple tree like it was normally routed through. I just routed it. I kept it in that little uh, bracket on the side next to the horn, and I just ran it straight up. And even when the wheel is turned to the right, it does look like there's gonna be enough slack on it. So it looks like I'm not gonna have to use that XT250 clutch cable that I purchased. All right, so let's go ahead and reassemble this and uh, I'll double check the wires. I'll make sure there's no kinks. I'll make sure it's not pulling anywhere. But right now it does look like it should be fine. And just to give me an idea of where I need to put everything, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the grip that I took off just to give me an idea of how far in the controls need to be. All right, so this little switch cluster just goes just like this and you take your longer screws, these are the one you're gonna use, and put it back into place. Okay, and so once you have this switch cluster installed, once again, it's just loosely installed just for fitment, I'm gonna go ahead and put the clutch lever back on. You wanna make sure you don't pinch the wires, and the clutch lever connects to the mirror housing, or the mirror bracket. Using these two guys, make sure you don't lose those little split washers. And they're exactly the same size, so it doesn't matter which one you put it in. Okay, so now that I've installed the electrical cluster right here, once again, still a little bit loose, and I've also installed the clutch. Turning the wheel to the right, or to the left, you can tell that the clutch cable has plenty of room to move around, and it's not pulling on it. So I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I was lucky I didn't need to modify my clutch cable at all. So before I go ahead and tighten everything down, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is in the position that I want it. All right, so now that I have everything where I like it and uh, the clutch is flat, everything seems to be good, I have enough slack, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything down, remove the grip, and then put the new ones on. All right, and now that these are both secure, let's go ahead and remove the old grip. All right, so now let's go ahead and install the Pro Taper grips. 
And when installing grips just like these, they're gonna look exactly the same, but they're actually a little bit different. As you can tell, the inner diameter on this one is a little larger than this one. And that's because this is designed for the right hand side where the throttle tube goes. And this is designed for the left hand side right here. All right, so we're gonna install the left hand side first, the uh, smaller hold one. And I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner on it. And hopefully that will allow me to slide the grip on just like that. So the brake cleaner helps a lot. And then once you've got it lined up, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure the logo's facing upwards because I'm OCD like that. And uh, obviously don't ride it just this second because the brake cleaner is still a little bit wet. It's going to uh, need to dry. And once the grip is on, just make sure it's pushed all the way up flush up against the uh, switch cluster here. And for anyone who's installed grips before, um, you probably know it's a big pain in the butt, but just using a little bit of brake cleaner or even some alcohol will make the job a lot easier. All right, and so moving over here to the throttle side, once again, you wanna make sure your throttle is working and functioning properly. Also, definitely remember that this washer needs to go in before the grip. Otherwise, the grip can rub up against this and it would make it harder to turn the throttle and also the throttle could stick. Go ahead and grab your grip and make sure that this is the uh, larger hole for this side because it's supposed to fit over the throttle tube. And I'm gonna spray a little brake cleaner inside there as well as on here and slide it right on. And this one is definitely more snug but as you can tell, it did go on properly with that brake cleaner. And same thing with this side, make sure it is flush up against this, up against that little washer. All right, and now that the grip is installed, just go ahead and make sure it functions freely, which it does. And one thing that's gonna annoy me, and I didn't even take my own advice, is I installed it upside down. Not a big deal, because I'm eventually gonna get hand guards, but in the meantime, that's gonna piss me off. All right, and so now that you've installed the risers, the handlebars, the grips, and all of the controls, the last thing to do is just go ahead and tweak everything to your liking. So once you've tweaked those and everything is to your liking, go ahead and snug down all the controls. And you wanna make sure you don't forget about the clamps here at the bottom, as well as the handlebar clamps. And make sure your handlebars are centered properly. You can use these little hash marks here to help guide you. And once you've gotten everything torqued and properly secured to how you like it, go ahead and double check all the wiring. You wanna make sure that there's no kinks. You wanna make sure that when you turn the wheel to the left or the right, it's not gonna pull it or kink it underneath any of the steering mechanisms. And once you've gotten that all taken care of, you can go ahead and readjust your clutch. All right, and when adjusting your clutch cable, this is gonna be your locking nut, and this is just a 12 millimeter nut. And you loosen that. And once you loosen that, this is your adjusting nut right here, which either tightens or loosens the clutch. And I'm gonna go ahead and set mine right about in the middle where it was. And I'm gonna adjust the rest up top. All right, so back up top here at the clutch, as you can tell, my clutch is a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it a little bit. And you want about three millimeters in between this gap right here. And you just check that out on a tape measure. Obviously make sure it's got millimeters on it. And you don't wanna to apply too much pressure when checking. So mine's at about four, give or take. So I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit. And to tighten this, you wanna loosen your locking collar a little bit and then spin this one counterclockwise. And as you can tell, it's tightening the lever a little bit. So I just turned it a little bit. And there's a lot less play. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten this collar back up just like that. And now that that's secure, just go ahead and double check. Not putting too much pressure. Definitely a little tighter and that should be perfect. And now you just wanna install your grommet starting with the larger one. Place it right over like that. And then pull up this shorter one. I like to grab both these little ears on it and just pull it right over just like that. All right, and so the last thing that I need to do is I need to reinstall the headlight. And you wanna make sure your headlight sits on this rubber grommet, so you install that part first. 
And once you've gotten it installed in that bottom grommet, just go ahead and push it in. And make sure that these two tabs right here are inside the rubber on the headlight bracket. Now go ahead and install the two 10 millimeter bolts on either side. Okay, and so now that the two 10 millimeter bolts are installed on either side, go ahead and take your headlight fairing and with these clips up here, they're just gonna go into these little rubber grommets. And they should just click right into place, just like that. And once they're clicked in up top, just go ahead and push this all the way down and take your little Phillips head screw and install it back into the bottom. All right, so the install is finally complete and I'm really happy with how it came out. I've looked on a bunch of different forums and also looked on YouTube and people seem to have mixed results with installing two inch or higher risers. Some people say they end up replacing the clutch cable while others say they're able to make it work. In my case with the two inch risers and the bars that I installed, I was able to make the clutch cable work. So that definitely saved me a lot of time. So all in all the install went pretty easy and you really don't need that many tools to complete it. Just be sure to double check your wiring and make sure that all the bolts and nuts and screws are properly torqued. Also, one of the biggest tips that I can give is using brake cleaner to install the grips makes it a lot easier. Installing grips can be a big pain in the ass because sometimes it can be really, really hard to slide them over the handles. So I highly recommend using this method. Other than that, let's head out on the bike and see how they feel. All right, so I've been riding around with these handlebars. I took them uh, to work today and it is much, much nicer. My hands are just a little bit higher. I don't feel as like scrunched up on the bike. And I almost feel that I have better control over the bike as well. It just seems a little more responsive. So as far as vibrations go, uh, they feel basically the same as the stock handlebars did. There's definitely still some vibrations and uh, that's to be expected especially at higher speeds on this bike but uh if you don't like the vibrations rocks the company that made these risers actually also makes uh, another model and i think it's like an anti-vibration model and i'm not sure if they're made with uh, some sort of different material or if they've got some sort of like rubber dampening system in it but uh essentially they're just supposed to help with the vibrations that are transferred from the bike itself to the handlebars so as far as the grips go, they feel great. They're uh, definitely more grippy than the stock ones. And I'm assuming that, especially in the rain and in like muddy conditions, they'll definitely help out a lot. So standing up on the bike is a lot easier, uh, especially now that I put those wider foot pegs. My feet feel a lot more comfortable. And also my hands aren't so low. I'm able to like actually stand up. I don't have to like scrunch over and it's just a lot more comfortable. So overall, I'm super happy with how these handlebars came out. The install wasn't easy, but it wasn't that hard either. It just took a lot of time and, you know, I just really wanted to make sure that none of the cables uh, or wires were gonna get kinked. But uh, after spending a little bit of time on the wire management, the uh, handlebars themselves and the risers went on super easy. The most important things are just making sure everything's lined up, the wires are good, and also you wanna make sure you drill the holes for these controls here because you don't want them to spin around or anything like that. So just take your time, you know, measuring and marking where the holes are gonna be. Obviously you wanna measure twice and cut once. And then once the handlebars and controls were on, it was just thrown on these grips. And uh, once again, make sure you use plenty of brake cleaner. I sprayed the crap out of the grips and the handlebars and they slid right on. So overall, I'm super happy with how they came out. I think they're gonna be a lot more comfortable, especially off-roading and for longer rides. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a fun one to make. It took a little bit of time, but uh, I hope it came out good. So yeah, I'm gonna try and have this video edited and uh, uploaded by this Thursday. And if I do, then uh, that means it's gonna be Christmas Eve. So for all you that celebrate, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Don't forget to get out and ride. Uh, I know it recently just snowed here in Connecticut, but I'm still out here riding. Just make sure to bundle up. Which reminds me, I need to get winter gloves because these, uh, these aren't exactly riding gloves, but uh, they'll do for now. But uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and ride safe.